G'day guys, it's Emo here. Um, sorry if I sound a bit nasal, I'm kind of doing this after i just woken up. I've had a few people wanting me to make some Moonkin videos. Um, so here I am making Moonkin videos. Um, I just want to say first of all that, yeah, I'm in EOTS. I'm just defending so don't worry about it. I'm still PvPing. I just want to say that the Druid Moonkin spec, especially the Moonkin spec, is based on playstyle for you guys. Um, same thing with the Resto. Feral usually has more of a cookie cutter spec, but when it comes to Resto and Moonkin, it's really based on your playstyle, like how you want to play your Druid. Um, and if you're doing it for Arena, it's based on your comp entirely. Like, um, I've got to say that Druid's the class where if you're doing Arena on your Druid, it really is based on your combo of how you spec, because there's so many different things you can do. Now, this is my basic PvP spec right here. I'm going to show you my gear first so you can see what I'm stacking and then I'll show you how my um, spec adapts to my gear. Basically I'm stacking agil uh, sorry, not agility, I'm stacking crit and haste. Now in boomkin form with only my um, mark of the wild up, I got 25% crit chance and I've got 18% haste. Now you might think the haste is a bit low, but that's because I got hurricane on my weapon. Uh, my maid and I have been trying it out, and we found that Hurricane is the best enchant for Moonkin right now. You might think that the Power Surge might be better, or Power Taunt, whatever it is. I was using it before, and I was using this um, proking 1k spell power for 20 seconds thing, the Vicious Trinket. Um, I've actually found out that I'm better off using this one from Tolbarad. Now this is very interesting. I think it costs about 65 Tolbred marks and you need Exalted with Hellscream's Reach. It basically gives you, well first of all gives you like over 300 mastery rating which I reforged into crit. On top of that when you slash use it, it has a 1 minute cooldown and for 10 seconds you gain 400 resistance to arcane, fire, frost, nature and shadow damage. Now this is everything except holy guys, because you can't resist holy damage. But as you can see here, it's got resistances to everything else. Now, um, you're wondering how much it might be. On top of Mark of the Wild, if I get rid of Mark of the Wild, it's still 30% reduced damage taken. So with Mark of the Wild up, it'll still be 30% damage taken because people only stack about 100, maybe 200 um, spell penetration. So this helps me against casters. It means that if I, I, if I pop it before a shadow combo, I can either resist most of it or I take less damage from most of it. Um, if you add this on top of Bark Skin, it reduces the damage by a lot, but most of the time you're going to find that um, you, you don't have to pop Bark Skin because of this. Now, also with my gear, I'm stacking Reforging to crit and haste mostly, but one thing you've got to take a note of, guys, is that, um, wow, I could, just got knocked off. Yeah, um, I'm using a Jewel Crafter right now on my Druid. It's Jewel Crafting and Mining, so I got extra Stam and my gems are bit improved. Now I got 67 crit rating gems from all my jewel crafting ones. You can only have a max of three jewel crafting gems in your gear at once. Also with my trinket here, my PvP slash use trinket to remove um, impairing effects and etc etc. I'm using the crit crit one because I'm finding that crit's more handy. Now if you get hurricane in your weapon you don't have to stack much crit in your gear. Now I'm going to show you guys in boomkin form, and I'll try and get Hurricane up, just to show you guys how much haste I get. To be very careful here, I don't want to, there we go. Okay, now Hurricane's up, now i got regrowth up as well, going in boomkin form, and that's 40% haste. So, anything more than 40% haste when you have procs up is pretty much pointless, because past that it's not really all that handy. There isn't really a hard cap on haste anymore guys. But anything over 40% is a bit ridiculous, and it's it, you're better off stacking crit basically. Since our hots are now affected by crit rating, it's it's better than you know stacking haste. Um, now I'm going to talk about my spec, I guess. Here we have the Moonkin spec. This is mine. You can armory my druid. It's um I'll put in the link below. It's emo styles, and I'm on Dreadmore. Now. With my spec, I've not specced into Lunar Shower, guys. Um, lots of druids do, but I'm finding I don't really spam Moonfire much because, well, I'm more of a casting druid, that's just my playstyle. 
like I said before, it's really just based on your playstyle, guys. Um, on top of that, I'm getting Moon Glow for reduced cost of all my spells by 9%. I'd rather have this than Genesis, because I'm finding that since I'm not, like, stacking too much haste, then I won't need Genesis very much. I'm getting crit as well, so I also won't need Genesis as much because of that. Um, basically, I've only skipped Luna Shower and Genesis in my whole tree. I've only got 2 points in Alcan Frenzy instead of 3, because that's still 10% chance to proc instead of 15%. And I'm finding that in BGs and Arena and stuff, it's still procs enough for to be useful. So you only need 2 out of 3 points for Alcan Frenzy. I've seen some druids only use 1 point in that, guys. It's um, completely fine. It's up to you. Like I said, play style again. Um, lots of druids don't do this, but I get Fura. Now, you're probably wondering why. In general, as it affects you on caster, it gives you 15% maximum mana. So I can hot more, I can um, basically CC more before I Uno. Um, and if I add that on top of my Moon Glow, that means I'm way more mana efficient than most Boom Kings. Now, if you're thinking about skipping this, it's entirely up to you. you do what you want, but I get this because it also gives me 100% chance to gain 10 Rage when I go in bear form. On top of that, I keep 100% of my energy when I go into cat form. Now I'll show you guys here, that's my portrait up here, on the top left there. As you can see, once I go in cat form I get 100% energy, when I go bear form I get 10 energy, I'm 10 rage, sorry. Now for bear form you usually pop your uh, enrage and then pop frenzy regen and that heals you up. So this gives me a bit of extra heals on my um, frenzy regen. Also you can see that's critting quite a bit, that's because I got high crit rating guys. Um, okay, well I'll go into cat form now, and yeah, as you see, I got 100 full energy, which means I can use Skull Bash every time I go in cat form. Now, on top of this, you can also pop your Stampeding Roar. Stampeding Roar, if you guys haven't realized, guys, is probably one of the most important Moonkin moves you can use for kiting. You could either go in bear, or you can go in cat form, and you pop Stampeding Roar. And what this does is increases your movement speed by 60% for 8 seconds, and this works for all teammates within 10 yards of you. That means anyone in your party. Now, this also works when you swap out of form, so you can pop it inside cat form, pop Stampede Roar, then go into movement form, or you can go and cast and hot yourself. This is really good for when you want to kite over mushrooms, guys. Uh, it's really effective. Um, it's probably the best way to counter rogues for most of the classes. Mainly rogues though guys, maybe enhanced shamans as well. If you pop that over mushrooms or you pop nature's grasp with it, um, there's no way they're going to catch up on this. They stun you or something. Now, I've gone into mas natural shapeshifter and then master shapeshifter. This is purely because I get extra spell damage. Um, like I said, it's up to you again guys. This isn't really an important move, you can always skip it if you want. Um, I also got Heart of the Wild here, increases my intellect by 6%, and my stamina by another 6% when I'm in bear form. On top of that, I've also really just... This is quite an old spec I've used for the whole of Cataclysm, haven't changed it much, and uh, yeah, I just don't win this shower spam, I never use Moonfire spam. In case you're wondering, in Mop, Mr. Pandaria, you will get Lunar Shower as base in your actual, tr in as your actual spec, rather than actually having to spec into this. You won't have to spec this, spec into this as your talents. You automatically get this when you go balance, and they changed it to 90% instead of the three times stacking for 10%. So it's going to cost 90% less mana, like it used to. I'm pretty sure the damage is increased on it too. Um, that's just my gear and spec, guys. If you want, I'll show you my glyphs now. I'm using Moonfire and Insect Swarm Glyph. Um, these two are a must have. Also, Star Surge is a must have. If you want to swap out like Insect Swarm or the Moonfire one, I su if you go into Lunar Shower, I suggest you swap out your Moonfire one for one of your healing spells. Or even your Wrath, maybe, for 10% more damage. But I'd suggest um, your Regrowth or Life Bloom, depending how much crit and stuff you have. Now, if you guys are wondering what the Life Moon Glyph actually does, it increases the crit chance of it by 10%. Um, I suggest you either get this or Regrowth if you guys spec in the Shower. 
to swap it out for your Moonfire. Since you're going to be spamming Moonfire quite a bit when you're in Lunar Shower, you won't need the periodic damage increase, since it's all about the initial burst instead. Um, now, the Regrowth Glyph, most people don't know this, but it, what it, it's like gibberish, but what it basically means is if you're below 50% health or the target healing is below 50% health, that means the hot you get from regrowth keeps refreshing until the target is over 50% health. Which means, potentially, you can keep it running um, until you hit over 50% health, which means you just regrowth once and then you can like fill up your other hots like, right after that. Now for secondary glyphs, I'm using Monsoon because reducing the cooldown of your Typhoon is really, really important against casters and melee. It's your main, one of your, again, one of your main, your main kiting abilities. Also, Typhoon is a great interrupt, as laggy and as buggy it may seem sometimes. You might notice that sometimes if you're doing like a 360 turn, um, your Typhoon might bug. It will set a global cooldown, all your spells, but Typhoon will not be on cooldown because it doesn't actually cast, even though you see the animation. Um, bark Skin Glyph reduces the chance to be critically hit by 25% while Bark Skin is active. They changed this glyph, it used to be against melee only, but now it's against anything. So I suggest you get this if you want to play a bit more defensive. And then Starfall Glyph is a must have, um, reduces the cooldown of Starfall by 30 seconds. Um, it's really, really important considering Starfall is one of your main bursting abilities. Now, if you guys are going to spec into Lunar Shower, you can always change out Moon Glow for Genesis if you're stacking Intellect. Um, you can also spec into Lunar Shower if you want, guys, instead of getting Dream State. And you can get rid of your Fear, and you can always spec into Blessing of the Grove and into Perseverance if you want. Perseverance, sorry. Now, Perseverance reduces all spell damage taken by 6%. When you put all your ability, put all the points into it. Blessing in the Grove increases healing from Rage Roof by 4%, and direct damage from Moonfire by 6%. You might want this if you're speccing to um, Lunar Shower and Genesis, because again, that affects your Moonfire dots, your Moonfire general attacks, and also it affects your hot, your hots as well. Um, it's completely up to you guys, but for mine, what I'm doing is I'm stacking crit. And I'm stacking haste, so I'm not stacking intellect. So I want as much mana efficiency as I can get from my spec, which is why I got Fura and Moon Glow. Um, that's basically my video, guys. I'll probably show a few PvP videos or like montages of my Boomkin later on. But um, this is just to satisfy those guys who want to know a bit more about Moonkin. Um, I'll be doing a little bit of tutorial things about me dueling other people, how to 1v1 as Moonkin as well. Just on a side note, guys, this isn't the best spec for Arena. I mean, unless you're rolling with Moonkin, Warlock, Resto Shaman, it's really not that great for Arena. Um, I've seen people doing it, but really the only people I've seen get anywhere are the Glad players. That being said, this is completely fine for BGs. In fact, I'd say um, a Moonkin Druid is probably one of the best classes and specs you can have for Battleground. Purely because they got insane CC, Solar Beam is really good when you entangle someone in it. Um, they got insane burst and AoE damage with Shrooms and Starfall and Typhoon. And it's just a really good spec in general. So um, have fun guys and I'll hopefully release a new video on Moonkin soon. Uh, catch you guys later and Merry Christmas. Again, guys, Typhoon over the kiting with the mushrooms. Here you can see the using the wall. This is how you get away with snapping the wall. It's a prime example of using it, guys. There's no way he could have caught up with me, even if I didn't have teammates there, because I had entangling up with my nature's grasp. Um, it's always good to pop your bark skin when you use a stampeding wall. In BGs anyway, just in case they quick catch you out, um, and you won't take much damage. When I pop Stampeding Roar, after that I usually pop Frenzy Regen, because they're going to be trying and hitting me as I get away, and yeah, basically I heal myself from that. If you guys didn't know, Frenzy Regen, when you're in, Lincoln, when you're, um, in bear form, sorry, increases the amount of healing you receive if you glyph it, but if you don't glyph it, what it does is it heals you, and it converts your rage into health. 
So basically it's extra hot. If you hot yourself up and you're careful, then you can basically kill yourself on top of that. This is a... I'm gonna try and get off a bear stun if I can, or a charge here. Yeah. That's Feral Charge, guys. It basically interrupts any casting that he does. Um, the main reason I'm actually a Torrent is because I can just force stomp people around me. It's probably the best spell you can have as a Rachel if you're playing as a Minkin. Or even as a Caster Druid in general. Purely because you can wall stop people in the Cyclone, or you can wall stop and cast a Starfire within that time. It's just really good in general for like um, being able to counter people. As you can see here, I pop bark skin and my uh, my nice little trinket there at the same time, and the mage couldn't kill me with his ice lance spam. That's how much it reduces the damage by. Also, guys, a little note: if you're playing a druid as either oh well, you can probably already know this is Resto, but as Moonkin, if you haven't already noticed, tranquility is actually really, really handy. Um, even if it's, if it's just for healing yourself, it doesn't matter. It's still a really good spell and it heals from your bucket load. Probably gonna die here. Okay, I'm gonna just stamp any raw and hop myself up. As you can see I'm in caster form and stamping raw is still up. So I can still get the speed buff, which means I'm gonna hop myself up, run away, and then come back. You're gonna be doing a lot of this guys to counter a lot of classes. You always have to run away as a moonkin and then run back. This is our main advantage. We can run away. Um, the main downside of this of course is that we won't be on the target, which is why you always dot up the target as much as you can before you run away. If it's against the rogue guys, make sure you have fairy fire up 100% of the time, and make sure you have dots on them. Also something I forgot to do once I went Moonkin after I stopped playing for a while, is Thorns. Thorns is your biggest friend when you come to versing with new classes. It's probably the most handy spell you can have against them, and it's probably what your main damage is going to be. Um, Thorns does about 2k damage, or yeah, around 2k, maybe, yeah, around 2k damage against melee targets every time we hit you guys. It's a really handy spell, and you should pop it every time it's up. If you, must. you guys might be wondering about my resilience. Um, I'm actually only about 3.3k resil right now, guys. You don't need much as a moonkin. Some people stack resilience, but I'm finding it's not that. Unless you're doing arena, it, it, you really don't need NVGs. Not that much Brazil anyway. Um, mainly because moving form, basically what it does is it reduces the damage you take by 15% from all sources. And it pretty much helps out a lot. Sorry guys, I'm here killing, trying to kill Moonkin. Watch out later. Now, with my... Speaking about resilience, guys. I'm using all PvP gear here, as you can see, except for my one trinket here. Um, I've also got the, the PvP trinket I have is the crit one as well, because I want more crit raining. Again, it's personal for preference, guys, but I'm really finding that if you're just going to BG and PvP in general, you really do not need that much resilience. Um, and if you're stacking intellect, you even need even less resilience, because your healing spells heal you for so much, because you're stacking intellect. Still in charge. 